Oh, there he is. Easy to find, hard to catch. A quick scoop of the net, sort through the mud and rocks, and you've made a successful capture. This slippery little sucker is a black belly salamander. The southern Appalachians are home to the greatest diversity of salamanders on the planet, with more than 30 species in the Tennessee Smokies alone. That's for now. The future doesn't look so good for the salamander. Currently, there are about 43% of the amphibians globally that are declining, and about 33% of amphibians are in risk of extinction, and that's two to three times higher than birds or mammals. Those are bothersome numbers to Dr. Matt Gray. He teaches a class at UT's College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources called Amphibian Ecology and Conservation. Today, prof and students are on a field trip. Down here you will see about five different species right in the water. The student's assignment is to turn over rocks and logs and find as many salamanders as they can. Then they gather back at the trailhead and identify them. The very first thing you want to look at is the shape of the tail. Here's a spring salamander sporting UT's school colors. But this is far from just catching critters for fun. The UT team is extracting DNA from salamanders by taking a little snippet of tail, which will grow back. They're looking for what's called a ronavirus, which causes more amphibian die-offs than any other pathogen in the U.S. More die-offs from ronavirus are occurring now than to our knowledge ever before. And so why is that happening? And so again, we're building baseline information on the species that are infected. Are there areas in the Smokies that have hot spots of infection? UT Ag researchers have documented that higher infection rates are happening at lower elevations. But the experts say no matter how high you climb into these mountains, wildlife is vulnerable to the ronavirus. Students like wildlife major Lacey Rucker believe they can have an impact here, helping these creatures to survive. I think it's important because amphibians are environmental indicators. So if something's messed up in the environment, they're going to be the first guys to tell you that something's wrong. Clearly something is wrong with our amphibian population, and the question becomes, can we make it right? This catch, clip, and release project looks to protect a beautiful ecosystem by making sure some of its inhabitants stay healthy. This is Chuck Denny reporting.